everybody, this is Kathy from Watch Me See and as you can see I'm very outdoorsy today. I have just returned from a five day trek around uh, Swedish Lapland um, and I finished five days on the Kungsleden, the King's Trail, together with Fjällreven and Handwerk. They took us on the Fjällreven Classic Sweden, which is a kind of a race, although it's not a competition who finishes first. And about 2,000 people participate every year and walk 110 kilometers through Swedish Lapland. And so I thought I'm going to show you what is actually in my backpack, which is a 65 liter Fjällreven Abbey School women's model. Um, it's quite big, but for five days in the wilderness, you do actually really need this. Um, and I'll start with a few things that I have on quick access. You kind of pack your backpack so that the things you need the most are the, um, during your breaks and the things that you need to get access quickly to. You keep those on the outer bags um, as quickly and, and as close as possible. So in my outer bags I have a couple of things like water bottles. I always have two. Um, just so I get enough water and I can use one for cooking and one for drinking. I also have a little cup attached to one of them so you can flip it out for coffee, which is really nice. The great thing about this one, it's a Primus water bottle. Um, we got this for this trail and it's great because uh, you can pour boiling water in it, boiling hot water, um, put it in your sleeping bag and it's kind of like your own personal heating system. Uh, it's BPA free so there's no chemicals or any plastic particles in your water so that's really great also for tea during the day um, next we have a little knife with a I don't even know what to call this with a little thing you can make fire on um, I didn't use this I didn't actually use this knife on the trail but it would be really handy if I had to make fire without matches or if I had to cut anything um, on the way. Then in the other side back, which you can clip open, I had my walking poles, which I didn't use too much because my hands get quite stiff when I use walking poles only for walking downhill, but they're really handy then. And also a rain cover for the backpack, which fits all the way around. And when it starts raining quickly, you want to have access to that very quickly. So that's in the side pockets. Then I have the pocket in the front, which is really handy. This is where I kept a spare pair of socks. Um, my hiking socks are quite old and they're, they're not really the best, so my feet get a bit sweaty and damp, so it's nice to be able to quickly change my pair of socks halfway through the day or in the afternoon and have a dry pair of socks in the front. Then I also have my rain gear. This is um, a Fjell Riven Eco Shell in purple which is waterproof and has a nice hood that closes tightly around your head so it even stays on in the wind as well as waterproof trousers which are nice when it rains or even just to sit on slightly damp ground in the evenings this is what I would wear as soon as I got my trekking clothes off which is always very nice and I always have my shoes in there as well so you would wear hiking shoes during the day but because your feet are in those shoes 8 to 12 hours depending on how long you walk it's really nice to take them off in breaks so I would have a pair of trainers or hiking sandals uh, with me and they are quick access in the front as well then next is the top bit it's going to be a bit tricky to show you um, it clips off like this and then you have like the back bit on the outside I have things like my trash bag because when you're on the trail in the wilderness you want to pick up all your own rubbish. Midge spray, midge spray, really important. Midge spray, yay! Um, my phone which ran out after three days, my little passport. Something to write on. I always keep notes of everything. Um, so I can remember what happened on which day, some personal things like my bank card and um, ID card. And then a toiletry bag, which is not the most hiking kind of equipment piece of hat, but it's really nice. Um, where I have things like my toothbrush, face balm, face cream, my toothpaste, and then something like biodegradable soap so you can wash yourself in the rivers without polluting the water um, and then 
something very important to me, which is Portabul. <laughs> uh, which really helped when my back was sore, or my feet were sore, or my hands were sore. Um, so having a tiny basic kit of medication with you is really good. Painkillers are really important as well um, to bring with you. And blister plasters, of course. Some sun lotion, because you just never know how warm it's going to be. A little bit of snacks and a dry bag, which I basically didn't use, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. So that's on the outside axis. And then on the inside I have things like my whiskey, because I'm a proper Scot now. <laughs> um, and then a few other things like a map and tissue papers and just a place to put a little bit of rubbish in during the day when you don't want to get your trash bag out. Right, and then in the main compartment, on quick access for most breaks when it gets really cold and windy um, and also then for lunch, it's really nice to be able to cook water, boil water for a tea or a coffee or even just to heat up your meal. So I have a little stove, um, which comes with a pot and a windbreaker for the stove. And I use that with a bag filled with the actual stove bit and some matches as well. Then comes a warm layer, which when you when you walk you get quite warm, um, and you, you don't really sweat too much in, in, in northern Sweden, but you do get quite warm when you walk, but as soon as you stop and take off the backpack, the wind chills it down quite a bit, so you want to have a warm layer. We had this down, down jacket, which is, uh, you have to pull over your head and then it has a really nice zipper to open up for ventilation as well if you get too warm again. I never walked with this, I only wore this in breaks, uh, just to make sure that I always have one warm layer of clothes that is dry and I can use on camp. Then I had my camera bag with a few spare batteries and SD cards. Um, then a little bag of warm things with gloves and an additional buff to put on just in case it got a little colder on the trail. Next comes a whole lot of food, which now is not so much food anymore because I've just returned to my hike. Um, I had several bags of freeze-dried food for lunch and for dinner, but then also snacks like protein bars, cereal bars. It was a bit tough as a vegan because a lot of the trail food is not vegan and there's a lot of milk powder and things unfortunately. But there's a few brands uh, that do vegan food uh, that is also actually really good and high in calories, which is what you want when you have a lot of physical activity. Then I had a packing cube with um, some spare clothes, things like long johns for the night, um, spare socks, a little quick dry towel um, and a few t-shirts just to be able to change in between the, the several days. Uh, which brings me to what I'm wearing right now. Um, this is a, it's a fleece cardigan, which is really nice and cozy and warm. It has a nice hood as well that closes really tight around your face. And um, then I'm wearing a, a trekking t-shirt, a sports bra, which if you want to hike uh, with a big backpack on and a lot of weight on your back, make sure that your sports bra doesn't have these little plastic bits because they tend to hurt and, and put pressure on your body, which you don't want. Um, and then I'm also wearing a pair of trekking trousers from Fjellweven which are really good because they're reinforced on your bum and your knees so you don't get wet too much and, and the fabric just keeps well a little longer. Finally, I also had a tent with me, which I was sharing with my tent neighbor, so she has the poles and the pegs, so I only carry the, the actual tent. Um, some more snacks, if you want. I brought all the dried fruit, which are heavy, and I didn't eat all of them, but I was really happy about the additional fruity sugarness. I had a little lunchbox where I kept something like a hummus or in some of the mountain stations and the checkpoints on the way there was free food provided so it's good to have a little lunchbox with you for these occasions. And then what else is in there? Oh yes! More food! <laughs> and my sleeping bag system. So we had a really cozy uh, sleeping bag which goes down to minus 8 degrees, so if it's minus 8 you're still feeling toasty and warm. 
Um, it's really fluffy but it packs fairly small and it's easy to fit inside the bag. We also had a blow up mattress so you can blow it up yourself and sleep really soft. And then I also used a tiny tiny sleeping bag inlay to um, keep myself even warmer because if you have to if you have an inner layer and an outer layer, there's air in between and then that heats up with your body warmth and you just stay even warmer and it's also more hygienic in a, in a sleeping bag that is not your own. Oh, and that was it. Somehow all that comes together to about 17 kilo, which doesn't sound too bad when you think of it, but when you carry it for five days it's actually really, really hard. So this is all I had on my five day trek with Fjellreven and Hanvag on the Kungsleden on the Fjellreven classic trail in Sweden. Um, I hope that this gives you an idea of what are the kind of things that you need if you go long distance hiking, especially with uh, camping out in the wild. And um, I hope to see you soon. I'll pack everything back in now.